Okay, so far, you guys have been looking at all sorts of inequalities. We've got our less than or equal to, our greater than, our less than sign there, or our greater than or equal to. And you guys are getting pretty good at that. What happens is now we're actually going to look at inequalities when we have negatives. Okay, so inequalities with negatives. And in particular, we're actually going to look at when we actually multiply or divide by negatives. Okay, that's what we care about. So let's have a look at some examples of that. If I asked you to solve this equation, the first thing that you want to do is you want to actually get x by itself. And so what would we do? We would divide both sides by 6 to get rid of this coefficient here because they cancel out. And we're left with that x is less than 2. So there's my solution. And if I graph this on a number plane, well, I'd have 2 in the middle there. 3, 4, and 5. Let's fill this out. 1, 0, and negative 1. And I would actually have, it's not equal to 2, okay, because it doesn't have that equal sign there. It's actually got just the less than sign, so I don't fill the whole the, the circle in, but I want everything less than uh, less than 2 there. Now what does that actually mean? That means that my x value could be anything as long as it's less than 2. So could it be 1? Yeah, x could actually equal 1, and that would still satisfy my equation. x could equal 0, it could equal negative 1. In fact, x could equal anything as long as it's less than 2. And if we ended up subbing this back into the original in equation, well, that would actually give us a true statement. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Our original in equation was that 6x was less than 12. Well, let's try some of our answers. Let's say that we, we say, well, what if x was equal to 1? If I sub that back in, into this side, I would get 6 times by my x value, which is 1. So I'd actually get 6. 6 times by 1, less than 12. So my answer here would be 6 is less than 12. Now, is that actually a true statement? Is 6 less than 12? Well, yes, it is. So having x equal to 1 as a solution works. Well, what if I tried a different solution? What if I try x equaling, let's just go with negative 5. If I sub that into the left side, I'm going to have 6 times by. My x value instead of the x is negative 5. And I want that to be less than 12. So what do I have on the left here? I actually have negative 5. 30 is less than 12. Now, is that, is that a true statement? Is negative 30 less than 12? Well, yes, it is, which means this can be a solution. So that means that when I've actually solved my equation and I got that x as a solution had to be less than 2, well, this having x equal to negative 5, having x equal to 1, having x equal to whatever I wanted that's less than 2 works. So this here is correct. Now why I'm showing you that and, and kind of um, being, being very firm on that is because it actually changes when we have negatives. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just say that we have negative 6x is less than 12, which is very similar to the one before. All I've done is I've just added a negative um, to my coefficient. So the coefficient of x here is negative 6, not positive. How do I get x by itself? Same way. Divide both sides, this time by negative 6. Now, they cancel out, and I'm left with x. And if I don't change anything, like we've done the, the past however long, that sign stays as a less than. And this time, 12 divided by negative 6 gives me negative 2. And so I work out that my solution is x less than negative 2. Well, let's suggest some possible uh, values. If x has to be less than negative 2, a number less than negative 2, well, what if x was equal to negative 3, let's say? Okay, well, let's test that. Same way as we did before, we'll sub it into the original equation and see if our answer is true. Okay, let's try this. We're saying x is equal to negative 3. So if I sub it into the left side, I've got negative 6 times by negative 3. 
and we're saying that's less than 12. Well, negative 6 times negative 3, because I'm timesing two negatives, gives me positive 18. I haven't changed my inequality sign. It's still less than 12. And now I need to ask myself, is this statement true? Is 18 actually less than 12? Well, no, it's not. It's actually greater than 12. So what's actually happened? Because I did it the same way as I would do it before. Um, I'm going to tell you, because we've actually divided by a negative number, this sign no longer is true. So what actually needs to happen is this. When we divide, or times, by a negative number, this sign needs to be swapped around so that it would read 18 is greater than 12. And that would make it true. Let's have a look at another one. If I had ne negative 7w is less than or equal to 21, and I want to get w by itself, well, let's get rid of the coefficient, divide both sides by negative 7. That cancels it out. And I'm left with w is less than or equal to negative 3. But what did I forget to do? Because I actually divided by a negative number, I actually need to make sure that when I write down my answer, this sign gets flipped around. And it no longer is a less than or equal to, but it actually becomes a greater than or equal to. So let's have a look at this one. To get h by itself, divide both sides by negative 4. As soon as I know that I'm dividing by a negative, then my h is actually going to not be greater than or equal to this time, but it's going to change. It gets swapped around, so it's now actually less than or equal to negative 4. And the same deal happens if I'm timesing. So in that case, I'm dividing by a negative, but I want to do the same thing if I times. So let's have a look at this one. This one's a bit of a harder one. In order to get x by itself, the first thing I need to get rid of is that denominator there. So I'm actually going to times both numerators by negative 2. So they cancel. On this side, I'm left with x minus 4. Now, because I multiplied by a negative number, this sign changes. Instead of it being greater than, it actually changes to a less than. 7 times negative 2, and that gives me negative 14. Now I continue. I still haven't finished solving. How do I get x by itself? Well, I add 4 to both sides. That cancels, and I get x is... I don't need to change anything here because I'm not timesing or dividing by a negative. It's only when I times or divide I change the sign. Negative 14 plus 4, and there's my solution x is less than negative 10. Okay, how would I do this one? Well, the first thing I want to get rid of is that constant. So in order to get rid of that, and a minus 8 from both sides, that cancels that out. I'm left with negative 3h. Do I need to swap this sign around? The answer, just in case you've actually said yes, is no. I keep it the same because all I've done is taken away 8. I haven't timesed or divided by a negative, I've just subtracted. So I keep it the same there. If I subtract a, neg a number, it doesn't matter. It's only when I times or divide. Minus 4 minus 8 will give me negative 12. And now I need to get h by itself. And this time, I'm dividing by a negative. So that cancels it out. And because I divided by a negative, now I swap that sign around. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive this time, and I get my solution as h is less than or equal to 4.